Well, welcome everybody to the 2024 virtual annual members meeting and forum. It's more of a forum than a meeting. So uh, you get to see me talk and, and Megan talk and all of our directors talk. So I want to introduce our board to you. And that is myself, President Ralph Mills, Vice President Andrea Denning, Interim Secretary, which pretty much she's the secretary. Uh, David Blackman is the treasurer. Tyler Kimball is our SGQ editor and chair of the editorial committee. And Ted Ellison is a director. We also have Maggie Wilm as a director uh, and uh, Jason Wilburn. So those are our directors. You guys can wave if you're on the call, maybe, and your videos are on. Huh? I see some. I see some fingers waving. Seen some people. Okay. Hello. Hi. Okay. Um, we have past president Kathy Bernard on here. Uh, Jack Whitworth, past president, was supposed to be on. Uh, Jerome is not making it. And uh, David Justin's not here, is he? Nope. Okay. So I'm a little new to this technology, so forgive me. I, I could see about 10 people. That's all I see. <laughs> um, I want to thank our sponsors again uh, from the conference in Kansas City, starting with the Monarch Glass Studios. Uh, they did an incredible job, their, their team, and not only entertaining us with uh, food and alcohol and uh, demonstrations, but uh, just overall good guys. They they were really good guys. Paul Miss Paul Wismach Glass, sorry, uh, S. A. Bentang, Lamberts, Yakagani, DHD Metals, which by the way I heard that they're back open and producing. Uh, we just placed an order with them yesterday. Canfield Technologies, uh, Meggie's company, Colorado Glassworks. DNL Art Glass and Supply, Jack's Chemical Company, which is your patinas, uh, Laticrete, uh, I guess that's for mosaics, and Oceanside Glass and Tile, Sussman Architectural Products, Traditional Glassworks, Cascade Metals, Coatings by Sandberg, Conrad Schmidt Studios, uh, cracked with Siobhan Arrest, Delphi Glass, Franklin Art Glass, Glass Pattern Patterns Quarterly, The Handy Hanger, and Glaze AI, River of Goods, Mississippi River Glass. Um, for those of you that were not at the the conference, this um, this quilt window came about and, uh, during the pandemic. A uh, pastor, new pastor of a church here in our community, took over, and in looking around the church, he found a bunch of windows up in the attic, and they were stored improperly, as most attic stock windows are. They just stacked together with furniture on top of it. Uh, obviously, these were original placeholder windows for the church as they were growing. They removed them and put in memorial windows. Uh, she asked if I could restore these windows. And I said, I, I could, but what a waste of time and money to restore these windows that really have no purpose any longer in your church. And 
And she said, well, we do have this one window upstairs in the education wing that we'd like to uh, put some stained glass in. I said, well, why don't we take your, take some glass from the past, the, the old, Let, let's take the old and blow off the dust and make it new again by uh, giving it some value, uh, making it have some context to what you're trying to do in your your congregation. And uh, this is the window that we came up with. And uh, I, I use this picture to describe a rebuilding process of where the stained glass association is at. And it's not a restructuring. It's just blowing off the old dust and bringing it into the, uh, you know, modern times, uh, taking our bylaws, which we voted on last year and passed and, uh, rules and procedures, which we're working on right now and, and updating them to be more relevant to, our lives today. And one, one of them is just having this virtual meeting that we're having. It's, it's uh, the second one that we've done. It's different than having a, uh, a business meeting at the conference. It's, it's really a more intimate way of um, getting you information to where you're really seated in your office or your living room or your kitchen and you're able to hear what we're giving you, the the information that we're giving you, and you can even take notes. Whereas at the conference, people are milling around, talking to each other, and it sometimes just felt like some people were listening and others didn't get it. Um, and so these conference virtual meetings like this are a way for everybody uh, to hear the message where they're not distracted. And And unless you're watching YouTube while I'm talking. And if you are, stop it. Uh, so basically, I want to thank everybody for taking time out of their night to um, join in on this um, conversation. This fireside chat, as Robert Jason called it. Take over, Megan. All right. Up next, Andrea, you we have uh the secretary's report. Yes. Good evening. So we have um I'm gonna report on active voting members. We currently have 94 voting members, 45 accredited professional studios and designers. 11 credited craft suppliers or industry partners for a total of 56 votes, 38 professional studio members for a total of 38 votes. And last year, one of the big questions that we got was about uh, voting and which membership levels are allowed to and why. And in the email that went out to members earlier today, if you saw in the links, there's a 501c6 versus 501c3 um comparison chart and that goes through like the irs rules about why we're set up the way that we are just in case you're curious and need some extra reading material tonight it's only about three pages i tried to keep it short <clears throat> thanks and, andrea uh, yep. megan yes uh one of the things that you have up there is the accredited craft suppliers slash industry partners yes. we're changing that up uh you know, there's no way that we accredit craft suppliers. It's not like we have anything to do with accrediting them. And so we're changing them to industry partners. That's the new title. Um, and there's going to be some criteria that goes with that, but it's not like they're an accredited studio. It's, right. I'm, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to, DHD metals and I'm going to walk through their facilities and say, well, you're not building your windows correctly. Well, that's We don't make windows. Well, you can't be accredited. So that's why we're changing that. And, that, and that's what we're talking about, changing things up to make a little bit more sense out of why we call people what we do.
And up next is Mr. David Workman. I guess it helps if I unmute myself. <laughs> All right. So we we just paid a bunch of bills, which is great. Uh, the third stained glass quarterly is paid for in production. Um, the labels are putting on and they should be uh, shipping next week. After we paid our bills as of November 1st, we had a checking account balance of $7,732 and 45 cents. Uh, we're going to start our budgeting process for 2025 in about a week or two. Um, it's going to be very important that the committees have input and uh, are part of the budgeting process. Uh, you're probably going to have a lot of outreach uh, in the next few weeks as far as uh, committees. We want to make sure they're all ready for 2025. Um, the conference was a success with the most new members attending. Uh, Nearly 40% of the attendees were new first-time uh, attendees and members, which is just outrageous. Um, and it was such a wonderful conference, and I met so many great people and had a great time, and the feedback has been so positive. Um, membership for the Stained Glass Association, when we include all our affiliate members, all our voting members, all our subscribers, we have a total of 1,115 members. That's at an all-time high, um, which is uh, great for our organization, and it's great for the future. Um, the billing for the source book has gone out, or is going out, I think, uh, tomorrow. And uh, I really want to speak about the source book. Uh, I am a part of the source book for our, our company, and I do get a lot of leads uh, and uh uh, phone call and traffic from the source book, which is wonderful. I asked them if they found us online and they said, yes, they found us at the Stained Glass Association website, not directly from my website. So I'm reaching out to more people uh, by being a source book member. Um, billing for the Stained Glass Quarterly Advertisers is uh, going out uh, on November 15th. And then a great job by Megan fighting for our tax-free uh, status. We're supposed to be tax exempt, but the hotel is trying to charge us over $5,777 in sales tax. And she fought hard and she got it uh, finally waived. And uh, we were able to save that money, which is a wonderful win for us. And don't forget Tuesday is December 3rd is Giving Tuesday. Um, please don't forget to include the Stained Glass Association in your holiday donations in estate planning. And with that, that ends the treasurer's report. Okay. My turn then for a little bit. Uh, we're going to run through some of what we've done in the last year and some of our progress on what we've been building and what we do for you all day in and day out here. So, um, we started a really what's turned into like a three year strategic planning process. Um, right at the end of 2022, we uh, we had a retreat with board members and some guests in uh, the first half of 2023, but we're finding that and getting member feedback um, has been intense, you know, and everything takes longer than you think it will, even in the digital age. But it's been really great because we've been able to really drill into what it means to serve the industry, which is our mandate is to serve the industry and build on accessible information and advocate for new opportunities for members. So it was it has been very cool to go through a process get member feedback and really be able to define the relevance of the SGAA uh, building on that sort of that the shoulders of the giants who've come before and it's it's really cool even though we've changed a lot how much we still hold to that core value of walking into architectural spaces and going, man, we can build something for this, right? Which is really what defines all of our members. So um, we came up with these five pillars 
that really define why we exist, why we've always existed, and what it means to continue existing going forward, and what and how, as we evolve, we can stay true to these five pillars that define our core mission and our core purpose. Um, so as Andrea was saying, uh, we're a little just a, in a, to get a, a tiny bit deeper into the numbers, we've got our 47 accredited professional studios. We have one accredited designer. We have um, 11 accredited professional craft suppliers who are becoming industry partners. And we have 36 professional studios, uh, 38, sorry. Um, we had 629 affiliate members in 2024, highest number ever, love it. Um, and then thanks to our ongoing partnership with the Society of American Mosaic Artists, we have 366 SGAA subscribers. SAMA brings another 432 subscribers to the magazine. Um, other fun facts about our community, we have 23 preservation organizations that we have um, uh, agreements with that we where we swap membership and help each other out. Like we built this really cool community that we're a part of. Uh, 85 libraries worldwide subscribe to the SGQ. And we now have just about 8,000 subscribers to our email newsletter that goes out which is very cool. So I was talking about those pillars. This is, um, this is a drill down into those pillars and what that means for us and what we hear at the office when we talk about what those core themes mean and how we serve. And it really is, it's a roadmap for how we can relentlessly, passionately, fiercely serve this industry and the people in it and uh, look for opportunities to keep building things for our members. And as we work with committees and the board and everyone else, this is really like, these are the guiding stars that help us move forward. So many things were accomplished in 2024. It was a really busy year. Uh, the quarterly committee was tasked with creating five total magazines this year to get us back on track. We've been off track for a while, thanks to all the things you might expect. And uh, the third one is in shipping. The fourth one is in layout. And the fifth one is like is built and being edited. So they are we're going to come in right at the wire, but we've done it. We are producing five quarterlies this year. Huge round of applause to Tyler Kimball and his committee of incredibly dedicated writers and thinkers coming up with new ideas. Um, I hope you all have seen the new um, the new sections of the quarterly that you can submit to, uh, tool tips and ask a scientist. It's just been really fun. So um, the foundation advisory committee held a fundraiser in the first half of this year called Facet and Forge in back in April, which was a huge success. Um, brought over 200 people here to our headquarters for a great night, learning more about the trades and how we work. The membership committee launched affinity calls. Uh, the restoration committee worked through new guidelines for the revisions that they've been working on on how we're going to distribute those to members and get uh, community feedback and approve those. The conference committee uh, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't update that. We are not in Kansas City right now. Um, but in the next slide, you'll see us in Kansas City. Uh, I had an incredible conference in Kansas City. The <clears throat> Governance Committee has worked through a massive overhaul to the rules and procedures that support the bylaws and are still working away on that. And if you love governance, you should join that committee. We're, we're a great party. Uh, the Finance Committee has been working hard on cash flow all year long and budgeting and really understanding how cash works in our sort of post-pandemic reality, which is very different than our pre-pandemic reality, as I'm sure it is for everyone. Um, but as like accounts receivable has dragged into uh, what is often an epic chase, uh, it's just it's required us to make changes. And so the Finance Committee has been really crucial for learning that. Here we are in Kansas City. 
it was a fantastic conference. We had a total of 108 attendees, 42 of which were first time attendees. So that was really, really fantastic. Um, we completely revisited how we do the vendor hall. We had, we had an awesome day on Friday in that space. Great feedback from everyone. So a lot of really amazing changes and that we went out and thought like, well, we'll see how this goes. Uh, you know, they were based on our members' feedback and they went great. And we got more feedback at this year's conference. So we're really looking forward to building on that feedback in the coming years. While, what I will say while we're also on the conference slide is that I know everyone is expecting us to announce the next conference and we're not announcing it this evening because another huge part of member feedback has been asking for in-field experiences and regional opportunities and more classes near where people are. And so our programming conference committee is going to be planning a new cycle of ways to meet and gather. That's a combination of opportunities that have come our way. Uh, we've been invited to participate in travel opportunities and additional partnerships and collaborations. So we will have news on what we are doing in the coming years, but uh, there's gonna be some new opportunities and new things to do. So keep your eyes open. And I guess if you want to find out what's happening first, you should join a committee. Those are the people that are in the inn and know the things. Uh, what else do we do at SGA headquarters? Uh, we get asked this question. Here's a short list of what might be included in our day here at the office. Um, we have been building relationships with insurance companies and, and as I was mentioning, other preservation organizations and advocacy organizations. It's a real joy to get out and do public advocacy work and talk about what our members are capable of building. Uh, there's no challenge we love more than hearing, we thought stained glass was a dying trade. Au contraire, we will come talk to you and write that opinion. So we love doing that work and we do it in a hundred different ways every day. The really major things that we did in 2024 that were part of our strategic initiatives that we've been building and go back to those core themes were that we really made a lot of progress this year clarifying the difference between the foundation and the association and how that can serve our membership. Uh, we, with all the changes and everything going on, it's been really important to draft tools for committee chairs and board members to use so that we can all help each other better because we are spread out across North America. Um, we increased funding and programming by adding new members. Uh, we also wrote some grants. And as we were writing this and getting ready for this, we can now announce that we got our first big grant on the foundation side of $20,000 to help plan some in-field events. Stay tuned for that. So. Uh, we we have updates to stairs and guidelines uh, that I was mentioning before. We have we are working on clarifying membership levels and working on new membership applications, which is huge. As many of you know, those have not been updated in far too long. And um, and again, just understanding how finances work in the nonprofit reality that we live in and work with every day. So that's the major, major things. Um, the lessons we are learning is that change takes time. Change takes time. And uh, we do have a lot of opportunities in the pipeline. And sometimes when you are being given all those opportunities, it's really hard to prioritize, but we have we have to prioritize and pick the one or two things at a time that we're going to work on and make sure that we keep our progress sustainable and don't overreach too soon. Uh, and that kind of discipline can be difficult because we're all so excited about the things that are happening. Um, 
And really, we wouldn't have the opportunities that we have today if we weren't building partnerships and coalitions. So uh, we, we're learning a lot about what really the true value of those partnerships that we have been building are are starting to mean now that now that we've had a few years to really build those up. Um, affinity calls have been an amazing addition to what we do. If you don't know, uh, the affinity calls are built based on member types or certain structural problems. So we have a retailer's affinity call, retailers only on the call. They are not recorded. There's no agenda. The the point is to gather with your peers and talk about challenges, victories, what's going on out there, what tools can you not find. Uh, our manufacturers get together on a call and it's been really great for us because we're a small staff, we're a small board, we can't be everywhere at once. And it helps us hear about what might be a problem before it, we might otherwise hear about it. So a big thing that we're helping some of our manufacturers deal with right now is counterfeit tools um, coming in and they look like Toyos, but they are not Toyos. And, you know, and that has a big impact on all of us. If people that are starting to fall in love with what we do are struggling with their tools, uh, they're less likely to keep doing stained glass. So affinity calls have been awesome. Uh, Another challenge that uh, we had hoped wouldn't become a trend, but has been a trend, is that shipping costs increased by a total of 17% this last year. They increased by 9% last year. So uh, that's not going away, and it does impact how we continue to make the quarterly. We're going to drop our two-year subscriber level this year, and we will now only have single year subscriptions because by the time we get to a second year, the costs and the subscription rates have just outpaced each other. And that's unfortunate. Uh, we are having new issues getting the magazine through customs. We still deliver to quite a few countries. And for some reason, certain uh, Brexit caused an immense amount of customs issues, and they, those still have not resolved. We're hearing lots of members talk to us about AI, but we're also hearing an increasing call for collaborations and partnerships and community um, community to be to be built. So this is what we're seeing here in the office. And always love hearing from you all about what those things are. Don't assume that we have heard about it. We are a tiny office. We know more when you all share with us. So keep sharing with us. There are so many opportunities in the pipeline, but like we were saying, we have to stay in our values. We have to prioritize. So we keep coming back to our pillars. We keep coming back to the reasons we exist. Um, within that, we have these two amazing tools. The foundation is now three years old, which is a major milestone for a foundation in terms of funding. There are certain grants for building yourself up that you cannot apply for until you are until you have made it across that three-year threshold. And we're there, which is why we got the big grant that we got so far. And we will continue applying for grants so that we can do more to serve you all. We're very, very excited about that progress. So as we continue to build up with your help, that's really the goal is to build ourselves up and push it out to the community. How can you keep helping with that? If you haven't heard me say it 47 times yet, we'd love to have you on a committee. Our committees are awesome. Uh, there are enough committees that based on whatever your strengths are, there is a committee for you. I will find it for you. I will pair you with the right committee. Um, this is just a couple of the different huge opportunities that are in the pipeline. We cannot do them all at once. We wish we could do it all, but we cannot. So this is really, this becomes the biggest thing that we lean on our committees for is our committees that are the most active and the most energetic help us drive that change. We just can't do it all in the office. So if there is something in particular you would like to see the SGAA do, 
that's that's why I can, like the committee impact really matters. And uh, speaking of getting people involved and what matters, Tyler, if you would like to take a moment to talk about um, what the nominations committee is proposing for next year's board. Hi, right, yeah, I would love to. Um, yeah, so as uh, the representing uh, person for the uh, nominations committee, um, I'd like to uh, present the proposed slate of officers for the Stained Glass Association of America uh, for the upcoming term. Uh, the nominating committee, committee as outlined in our organization's bylaws as, digi as diligently considered and nominated the following individuals. Bryant Stanton, president. Ralph Mills, uh, vice president. Andrea Denning, secretary. David Blackman, treasurer. Myself. Uh, FGQ Editorial Chair, Director, Ted Ellison, Director, uh, Jason Wilburn, Director, and Maggie Wilm, Director. And uh, as no other nominations have been received by the committee, the office or the board, uh, we're presenting this slate for vote. Um, viva voce. Uh, all eligible voting members will receive a ballot via email from the SGAA office to cast their votes. A majority vote of all voting members is required to approve the slate of the board of directors viva voce. The successful candidates will assume their respective positions immediately. Thank you, Tyler. <laughs> and if you don't see your name on this list, feel free to nominate yourself in the coming year. And like Tyler said, those emails will go out shortly after this meeting. As soon as the recording's ready that we can put with it, uh, that will go out. So again, um, our ask of you all will always be, you know, keep being members, keep giving us feedback. Uh, when we send out a survey, we're not doing it for our own enjoyment. We know no one loves a survey, but your feedback really, truly matters. This organization is changing and, evolve and evolving because you all are so good at getting back to us. Uh, we love, we love, love, love the feedback here. It keeps us on point and focused on the priorities. So when you're thinking about whether or not you would be a good volunteer, I mean, so you're all great volunteers. I'm sure you all have a skill that you wouldn't think we would necessarily need. But if you're a project manager, if you're a writer or a technical writer, uh, if you're a programmer, data entry, do you, uh, you know, were you a paralegal before you went into stained glass? Uh, do you have experience bookkeeping? Do you love planning events? Do you love feeding people? Do you love choosing a menu for things? You you may not know a, about a skill that you have that would be really, really helpful to a committee. So th this is just a starting list of things that you might specifically be good at that any of our committees might need. We are continually pushing things out on social media. But again, like the more you all talk to us, the better we are at sharing and advocating for you all on social media. If you love one of our newsletters and a call or an opportunity, or you know somebody that should join for a newsletter, write a google review holy cow you wouldn't believe what you know helps keep pushing this community forward uh make an introduction and donate we will be sending out an email on behalf of the foundation for giving tuesday share it far and wide that stuff really really helps us do what we do um we run a tight ship and for every dollar we get as any, everybody who comes to our conferences knows and works with us knows we try to put three or four dollars back out into the community. So we really, really appreciate everyone's support. And uh, I know that you all will help us have another incredibly successful giving Tuesday and end of the year. And with that, that is the end of our, our agenda and our information for you this evening. Well, Megan, we need to thank Ted Ellison for providing the oh. very appropriate um, yes. stained glass uh, vignettes for your PowerPoint. Yes. Thank you, Ted Ellison, uh, for helping me build the PowerPoint for this evening. I want you, uh, 
Ted Ellison spends most of his waking hours looking for obscure stained glass windows that he can use in his thoughts. So uh, the last one, the last one, I just really couldn't make out why the spigots were coming out of the guy's head. I love it. Yeah. So, uh, Nope. If you're ever looking for a miscellaneous photo of stained glass, something Ted Ellison's the man he's got it. Yes. Yes. It's uh, uh, Megan. Yes. Would you, this may be weird, briefly introduce or describe the source book? Yes. What you I, need? I would love to. So if you are on stainedglass.org, the source book, and if you've been with us for a long time, the source book used to be a print. It looked a lot like the magazines. It was a print publication that was mailed to uh, architecture and sacred space resources mm -hmm. and now it is online so where we were we could reach several hundred people with the print source book we now reach tens of thousands of people on stainedglass.org and all of our accredited professional and professional studios are listed under find a studio but uh we build profile pages if you sign up for the source book um and it's a it's a tiered program so you pay less for it over time, the longer you're with the program. Uh, but it's it's advertising right on stainedglass.org for our professional and accredited professional members. And those profile pages are seen by insurance agencies. Sometimes it happens right while we're on the phone with them, we're able to say like, oh my gosh, you're on our website. Check out Stanton Studios page. Uh, they're, you know, they're relatively close to you. And these are the other studios that are closer to you because maybe it's a question about something that's an emergency and they need someone and they're feeling like they need someone close to them. But sometimes we're on with an architect or a designer that's looking for something specific and we're able to walk them through the site on the phone and they're able to just scroll through those pages and look at the incredibly wide variety of work that they had no idea existed. Um, and that's really mm -hmm. the most exciting uh, part of having you all's work to show off in that way is that we're so, so frequently starting with sacred space leaders, facility managers, architects, designers that really had no idea that you all exist. And so giving them a tool where they can sit in one place and scroll through different studios from around the country, you know, and visually see like, oh, well, this studio is across the country, but I really like their work. Okay, they'll travel for you, man. Right? So it's just, it's it's a very educational way for us to hit the road. And when I'm on the road at another conference or speaking somewhere, I always sort of take it with me. I have a pop-up on my laptop and I set up my laptop and I just have it scrolling through that tool. <laughs> so that's what the source book is. Um, we will be sending out a specific email with a report on how that website has grown in the last year. I'm pushing through an update right now. Um, we can see how people are searching it, how what keywords they're entering to end up on the page. And so each year we try to refine the page to push it up in the Google results and bring more people into it. Does Thank that you. Okay. <laughs> cool.